what's happening YouTube? This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Accurate Engines here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. If this video is helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my videos, and give me them sweet old thumbs up. If you've got a question for me, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I'll certainly try to answer your questions free of charge if I can. I can't help you with your baby mama drama, but I certainly will try to help you repair your automobile. So right here behind me, and when I get going on this video, I get going, and it's an exceptional video, and I'm going to show you how to get that alternator out of there super easy. Remember, if this video does help you at nighttime while you're sleeping on your computer, put on one of the Clayway Sweet playlists from my YouTube channel, and turn that volume down, let them suckers play from front to back. That's how we get paid. We make about two tenths of a cent per video, so <laughs> we're not getting rich over here like some YouTube ballers. Are. Remember, if anyone else can do it, I promise you, you can do it too. Now, this might seem a little bit harder, and you might have heard on these V6 engines that you can remove the alternator through, the but the way that I do it is so simple and so easy, and I show you all the tips and tricks about getting this thing out. I actually think it's easier than removing it through the top. If you can get it out that way, I've never personally done it. This is the way the book says to do it, so it's the way I do it, and I know it's an easy way of doing it. This information will be the same on the Ford Escape, Mercury Mariner, Mazda Tribute with the V6. This is going to be the same video for you as well. And stay tuned as we do more repairs on this Ford Escape, and we give it away to a good, hardworking, needy family just like yours. You want to be a part of that? Look down in the description below where you can either donate or submit your entries for hardworking, needy families. So the first thing we're gonna do is pop the bonnet and loosen up the eight millimeter screw and remove the positive side of the battery cable. Going over the passenger side, we're gonna remove that 17 millimeter bolt or nut that is right here on the end of the motor mount. Some situations it's 18, some situations it's 17. Now we're going to put the vehicle up on jack stands. Now there's two different places that you can jack the vehicle up. Preferably underneath here on what would be considered the frame of a vehicle, but on the pinch weld. And the pinch weld is a doubled up piece of metal that runs along the bottom of the door at the door jams. I prefer to put mine on the subframe portion of the vehicle. Since it's raised up safe, I'm going to take the five 19 millimeter lug nuts off the wheel and remove the wheel. So we need to remove a couple of things here. The axle nut, which is 32 millimeters, and eventually remove the axle. So we're gonna end up removing these nuts off of the strut and moving the spindle out. Now the bolts that are holding our strut to the control arm are 18 millimeter on both sides. Now to get these two bolts out, you can take a punch or you can twist the nut onto the end of there a little bit so you can drive it in there and then push it the rest of the way through with the punch. Now taking a 10 millimeter, we're gonna remove the 10 millimeter bolt that is securing our ABS wire and our brake line to the strut. Now taking a pair of pliers, or if yours is not all rusty like that, you can take a screwdriver and we can pry this back. This clip slides off like this so we can get the brake line out of the holder. Now pushing down on the clip on the line when it's not frozen in there will allow it to come up and slide out. Now it's really not necessary but you could put a jack underneath the control arm before you go to remove these strut bolts. I almost never do it. You can pretty much manhandle this and put it up in and out of there fairly easy. If this isn't easy enough to tap out of there you want to make sure that you put your nut on there before you go to remove the axle so you don't bend up the threads on the axle and have to replace this portion of the axle i only screw mine on a couple of threads generally when you get the axle pushed in it'll come out the rest of the way once it moves a little bit as you're hitting on that you can pull out to remove the control arm and then it won't be pushing that up against the axle and the axle should collapse so on itself you usually need to hit it a little bit harder than I am to get it to break free out of the wheel bearing. I'm going to remove the two seven millimeter bolts that are securing the caliper to the rotor. Now we're going to remove the little clips on the outside of the brake. 
Now we can take a zip tie and we can hang the caliper to the spring. Notice I just use a screwdriver if I need to reconnect the two parts. Now we're going to work on getting that axle out of the spindle. I basically pull back on it. I have to take a hammer at one point and just give it a couple of taps to get it moved around and out of there. I lift the ABS wire up over the control arm connection and good. Okay, up on the top of our axle right here, there's two 13 millimeter nuts. We're gonna pull them 13 millimeter nuts off, which is gonna allow us to remove our whole intermediate shaft. When we remove that, it may drain transmission fluid out of there. So we wanna make sure that we have a catch pan underneath it to catch that transmission fluid that's gonna come out. It's not gonna be too much. Now, when I'm taking these nuts off, I use an extension with the 13 millimeter wobble to be able to get at them. Now, with the two nuts out of there, we should be able to reach up in there and quite simply pull it out. I'll need to do some maneuvering with both hands. Now, that gives us ample room to maneuver our alternator out of the original location. Now taking a 10 millimeter, we're gonna remove the couple of screws that are holding on the splash guard. Now with the shroud removed, we can take a half inch drive ratchet, stick it in there, turning it clockwise to move it this direction to loosen our belt so we can remove it from our alternator. This is another possible way to remove them alternator bolts. From underneath the vehicle, we're gonna go up above this bar Doing it this way will allow us to get right on the bolt and easily remove it. Now to get on the two lower bolts, you can just use a regular ratchet with an extension, but in my case, I'm gonna use an extra long gear wrench, 13 millimeter. Now I know on some of these vehicles, they have covers over them. And I really wish there wasn't a hack that worked on this before because them covers are kind of important. Uh, they actually dissipate the heat away from the alternator making it last longer. Sorry that I wasn't able to show you that on this video, but I do have another video that shows you how to take them off, showing you how to remove a Ford Escape alternator, but this video is actually a lot better and simpler. So we can take our oxygen sensor and unplug it, and then we'll be able to maneuver our alternator around to get our wires off the back of it. Now we're gonna raise the engine with the block of wood and the reason that we're using a block of wood is because we don't want the metal from your jack to contact the oil pan because you may crack it. We also generally tend to try to lift from this area but not trying to lift the exhaust. I thought I would show you the space that I have between the engine and the mount while I'm jacking it up. I think this will be helpful for you folks at home. Now I'm going to reach my hand underneath there and spin the alternator. With having our alternator flipped around, that allows us easy access to get our 10 millimeter nut off. Make sure you save that. Don't take it to the rebuilder because it might not be returned. And our electrical connector on there. Our electrical connector is held on by a little pushy. We need to push down on this pushy. And if it doesn't release, pull it towards the unit and then pry it back. Took me two hands, but I was able to get it with my thumb. So we're going to bring it up. Pay particular attention to the orientation of the alternator. It's also going to need to be reinstalled the same exact way. Uh, I got this. After I was done with this, I had a bunch of other work I was doing, and it wasn't as easy to get it back in. And then you roll it into place. Okay, spinning the alternator pretty much back to its original location like you were going to mount it allows you to pull it out the hole successfully. Okay, if you can't get the alternator in or out for whatever reason, which you should be able to, mine came out real easy, but I'm having a struggle getting it in. Take a pry bar, and we are going to smooth roll the engine this way. And once this bolt, you should not be able to see the center hole, then you should be able to remove it or install it. And then you'll just take a punch and move the engine back. Once it sits down, it pretty much sits down near the right spot. Now, I wanna make sure that you folks don't struggle too much with getting this alternator out. Maybe it won't come out the way that I went to take it out. I've already got mine put together and it wasn't necessary for me to do this, but I know in the past it could have been. You could loosen up this nut and this bolt. You do not need to remove them. You would probably just turn the nut down to here, 
take a jack and put it up underneath your control arm right here and you'd be able to lower that down to be able to get that alternator out easier than I did. But when I found the sweet spot of where that alternator comes in and comes out, it came in and out perfectly. Okay, so let's say you're ready to put that bolt back in there and you can't get it to line up. You can take a long extension, put it in between these forks, or you can quite simply take a pry bar and pry it over, get it ready. Mine's actually pretty close and I should be good. Or you can take what's known as a pick, stick it in there and move it to where it's lined up inside the hole. Okay, reinstalling the belt. You're gonna put it on every pulley except for the, alt, the air conditioning compressor pulley. Turn your tensioner clockwise and insert it onto your air conditioning pulley. And up there in the corner, you can see the belt routing. Man, I hope everything's good with your automobile and you got it rolling down the road and she's running smooth as silk. If this video was helpful, please consider subscribing. You share my videos. Put on one of my sweet Clayway playlists from my channel at nighttime while you're sleeping on your computer to turn that volume down let them suckers play remember if anyone else can do it you can do it too stay tuned to the channel as we give this car away think of me down here at accurate engines i greatly appreciate y'all don't be the next of them be the first of you and if anyone else can do it you can do it too god bless and have the best of days